Step one is to check all of the fuses that are related to your convertible. It seems dumb, but it could be a potentially huge time saver. Sadly for me, it was not my fuses. So the next step was to hook up my PA Soft 1.4 to the car and read the errors for the CVM module. That's the convertible module. I had error VSW 4.2 input at ground, which means that somewhere along the line, I have a wire being grounded that shouldn't be, meaning that the signal is not getting from the button back to the rest of the system. If you have a similar error, the first thing to do is remove the back seat. Do this by pulling the front edge of the bottom portion of the seat up, releasing them from the notch they sit in, and then pull up and out at a 45 degree angle. The top portion of the seats is held together with two 10 millimeter nuts. Uh, just use a simple socket wrench to get those off. Then pull the top section up and then out. If you read the code and you know that the problem is electrical, then there's no need to look at the convertible motor. However, if you hear like grinding gears or jumping gears, then it might be worth taking a look at. To take a look at the convertible motor, simply remove the three 10 millimeter bolts off the convertible motor lid. Mine is metal that I ordered online, but yours will be black plastic. The first thing to take note of in this picture is the motor gear. It can become worn out or stuck or dislodged. Additionally, if your convertible motor lid, the black plastic piece, is too loose, it can jump around, which means that if you hear a grinding or a slipping, that's probably your problem. Also check your Bowden cables for tightness to ensure that as the system engages, your top will be engaged. Lastly, check the position sensor to ensure it also has not moved. If all of that looks good, it's time to hunt for the broken wire. Remove the driver rear quarter panel with two 8mm bolts under the armrest. Pull out the bottom first and disconnect the speaker. There are then two more 8mm bolts that are holding the black trim in place. Also, if you're looking at your car wondering why you don't have that blue box, that's simply the pass-through to my subwoofer. Once those two 8mm bolts are removed, you can now remove the bottom portion of the black trim, which I'm shown holding here. This little slider piece now needs to be disconnected by removing the tab from its socket. Once the slider piece has been disconnected, remove the top portion of the quarter panel, which is connected with a series of tabs, hopefully shown here, one, two, three, and four. Just by pulling up, it will come off. After removal of the top quarter panel, the convertible module and some of the wiring will now be visible and available to work on. The white box is the convertible module. 
Obviously, some of these wires run to the front of the car so that when the button is pressed, the signal can go back to the convertible module. However, the wires running up to the convertible top itself are more likely to be where the problem area is. In this video, I have removed my sheathing on the bend, thinking that that was a potential place for a broken wire. My wires on that corner were okay, but yours may not be. After some further investigation, this area here seemed to be a pinch point. The next step is to investigate that exact pinch point. I'm calling it the arm bend, and then there's an elbow shield, uh, which will allow you to remove the cover holding the wiring. The first T20 where I'm pointing right now is what I'm calling the elbow shield. And then if you look a little bit to the side, there's three more T20s which are guarding wiring behind there. The next step is to remove that wiring cover using a T20 which will expose the weave holding the wiring. Then use a knife to open the weave without cutting any wires. Again, I got rid of one, two, three, four T20s, and this piece pops off, exposing the wiring weave. As you can see, there are a lot of bends where potential issues could arise. When I opened up my wiring weave, sure enough, my blue wire was broken. There were a couple other thinner wires that were almost about to break or were frayed. I replaced all of the thin wires at once so that I didn't have to do this again. The next step is to fix the broken wire or wires. I used butt splices like in part one, but soldering is also an option if you have that skill. If you're going to use butt splices, my advice is to stagger them in different portions of the wiring. That way, when you go to shove it all back into the cover, it will fit. Again, I replaced all of my thin wires so that I hopefully don't ever have to do this again. After all the wires are fixed, you have to put them back in the groove before you can put the shield on. This is actually very important because you want to put them in with little or no resistance so that there's less crossover and stress and breaking in the future. Notice how on the right side my butt splices are slightly staggered so that they're not all in one spot, but on the left side it does not matter. This is how the cover needs to go back on. Unfortunately, I needed both hands to do it, so I had to put the video at a weird angle. Once you have the wires in and the cover on, use a T20 to put all four torque screws back in. Now that you have the wires back in the cover, ensure that nothing is pinched or caught and that the wires can move freely on the left side. Uh, I tried to push mine down a little bit so that they were in that groove and less likely to be pinched or um, caught on something when the top moves. You can also try to push those wires down through that little groove right there or pull them down. The last step is to put it all back together and do a couple tests. Once you're at the portion with the convertible motor, uh, that's when I would do your test cycles.